Algebra 2, 1.3b, Commutative and Associative Properties and Expressions. So the subtraction theorem that we learned about in video 1.1c, it told us the expressions like m minus n and m plus a negative n will always have the same value if we make the same substitutions in the expressions. And equivalent expressions will always have the same value for all acceptable replacements. So if m equals 8 and n equals 5, in either of these expressions, m minus n and m plus a negative n, we're going to get the same answer because they're equivalent. We can subtract 5 or we can add a negative 5. We're still going to get 3. For 5y minus x, it'll equal 5y plus a negative x. Instead of subtracting a positive x, we add a negative x. It's adding the inverse. For 3a plus 5b, it's the same thing as 3a minus a negative 5b. This uses the subtraction theorem in reverse. Instead of adding a positive 5b, we subtract a negative, because these two negatives make a positive. They're equivalent expressions on both sides of the equal sign. And remember, if we have 5 plus x over x minus 1, x can be anything, but it can't be a 1 because then we'd have 1 minus 1 down here as the denominator, wouldn't we? And we can't divide by 0. It's undefined. We just learned that. And the number properties can help us identify equivalent expressions. The commutative property, I want you to remember the word commute, like commuting to work or commuting to school. It's like your distance traveling to school. That tells us that we can change the order of the terms when adding or multiplying, and we can make an expression that's equivalent to the original one. So for addition and multiplication, for any real numbers a and b, a plus b equals b plus a. See how we switched the order? The a was in front, now it's in back. And for multiplication, a was in front, now it's in back, but it's still going to equal each other. It's an equivalent expression. We just changed the order in commutative. So this is why I wanted you to think of commuting for commutative. When you're at home and you go five miles to go to school, at the end of the day at school, you're going to go five miles to go home. It doesn't matter the order. It's the same equal amount, see? The commute is the same from home to school as it is from school to home. It's just the order is different, all right? When you change the order for the commutative property, 3x is first, now 3x is last, see? It's just a different order. It's the commute. Now, in the associative property, I want you to think of associates and associating and who you associate with, okay, who you hang out with. The associative property tells us that we can change the grouping order when adding or multiplying and we get an equivalent expression. So for addition, for any real numbers a, b, and c, I want you to notice that they're all in the same order. We have a, then b, then c, a, then b, then c. We just have parentheses around different ones, don't we? So they're in the same order. They're just grouped differently. That's the associative property. And in multiplication, they're in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C. They're just grouped differently. A, B together, then B, C together. Same order, different groups. Associative changes grouping. All right? So you change that grouping in the associative, and we have 5A first. 5a first, then 2b, and then 3z, then 2b, then 3z. It's the same order, different associates. So look at these people. They're in the exact same order. This lady in the dress, the guy in the brown jacket, the girl in the short skirt. Lady in the dress, guy in brown jacket, girl in the short skirt. They're in the same order. We're just grouping them differently. See? She doesn't look too happy, does she? She's like, what are you doing with my guy? So just remember, it's who you associate with for associative, okay? These associates are standing in the same order. They're just grouped differently, all right? Associative. Now we can use both to help us solve an algebraic expression or equation. When you see it written like this with the 3y way over here and the 2y way over here, we can change their order with the commutative property and get these y values closer together, see? And then we can group them with the associative property. So it goes from this to this by using both properties. We can rearrange and group the terms to solve them easier. Okay? That would be x plus 5y, wouldn't it? Combining like terms, 
So our next video, 1.3c, we're going to talk about the identity properties for 0 and 1. And if you want to link to any of the previous videos, just click on the description of this video and you'll see all the links for chapter 1 that we've covered so far. All right? Because each one of my videos builds upon the previous one. All right? It's like we're climbing stairs one step at a time. And if you skip a step, you might get confused. All right? So all the links are in the description. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video about identity. Bye.